So I'm kind of thinking of changing direction of what I'm doing on YouTube. So, so there's no miscommunication about what's happening. I'm not quitting YouTube, this, that isn't what's happening. So this isn't a quitting, I'm leaving YouTube video. This is a, I'm pivoting. I want to do something different. And it involves that really noisy thing in the background there. So, I think I want to be more involved in the full driving industry. So obviously I'd, I'd say that I'm relatively well known and then involved in the full driving game through the YouTube stuff that I've done. And I'm going to continue to do still too. Don't, don't worry about that. But I think I want to be more involved in the, in the industry of full driving. The more helping the community out more, helping doing, being more involved in a, in a supplier sense. I think this is going to help me do it. So I recently got some new machinery at work, a new CNC machine. And it's kind of opened up a bit of opportunity for me to do something else, which is kind of leading more into my passion about what I want to be doing. Not that I don't enjoy work, what I do normally, which is kitchens and laundries and bathrooms and like that. Like, I actually really like my job. I like the people I meet. I, I like the experience of of renovating and sort of transforming things for people. I actually really enjoy it, surprisingly enough. But it opens up a world of doing more full drive related joinery. Still the same feel, but full drive related. We're, I'm thinking about getting into full drive drawers. And I kind of want your opinion on them. All right, so these are just some prototype ones. So, let me say photo, this is pretty much identical to the one I've got in my car, so I'm sort of copying my own design. And I wanted to see if I could put it into the CNC and get the cutting list right to cover on the CNC as is. But also with a couple of funky things in there as well. So that's like my, my logo should have been great in the back of it. Um, relief hole for, for air suction and whatnot. Sensor this goes in here. Flush with the back. So this is going to be slightly out because the material thickness of this is different to the thickness of what I'm going to use in the end. Um, so it's out by like three mil. Kind of irrelevant. All this I do is just make sure that the overall picture I'm trying to do works. All right, so that's literally how quick it is once it comes off the CNC because everything's cut the size and cutouts are done and shapes are done and everything's kind of finished. It's just put it together and that's, that's the draw box done itself. Obviously it would normally get glued and screwed and it's a bit more finesse, but it's quick. So some of the downsides I've noticed of CNC is small parts handling. So this is one of the draw sides, which obviously has got a little logo on the side there as well, but well, it's going to be more just to turn it this way. It um, must have moved in the machine and it's obviously gone, gone skew if. So there could be some dramas down the track with obviously trying to hold those small parts um, in place. This is, this is why I'm testing stuff out to try and see what works and what doesn't. Having said that, chipboard, raw, raw chipboard is horrible on a CNC suction bed because um, it just wants to suck straight through it where 
the ply's obviously got a, a coating on it which should sort of limit the amount of suction that goes through it so it should hold down better but at like $200 a sheet I kind of don't want to put it on there yet until I know everything works because it's pretty expensive stuff so I've got some super cool it's brand new I, I've never seen it before in a, in a ply and I, I think it's super cool for a design I'm um, not saying no one's done it before but I've never seen it so I'm I'm using it for me for what I want and what I want to offer to you guys so we'll get there soon but let's just I want to finish this prototype make sure everything works and then we'll yeah I think in this video we might cut it we might cut the finished product in I wasn't planning on doing this <laughs> we'll cut the finished product in this video so hang around for that one because I'm gonna be scared I think that's the same setup that I had for it, well, I have in my car there. So essentially, this drawer comes out with this one. This one, that one, right come out, and we have to slide out separately at the same time. You can see how we are between batteries. See on the sides, there, I've got the, uh, the logo in there. I put them in a specific spot for a reason. So this one's down a bit low because I want runners up high in here. Um, main reason being that when this lift up table goes in later, um, with mine the drum was I had my runners down here so I, my, I couldn't have the, the bar handle going across to join, join them to so have a handle to open the drawer. So I'm trying to get the runners up as high as I can so uh, when this comes up it doesn't hit it and you can still use the bar handle to go from there. So the logo down the bottom and that way the runners for this one are down the bottom as well so, it, so the logo is up top. Kind of trying to think of everything. Put it all back together. Reduce the measurements. So I've laid up the ply now. So it's called hexa ply. So from there it probably just looks like a big flat sheet for you guys. But if I show you down here, basically hexagon sort of the whole way through it, and it's like it's rigid, so that it's textured board. That way it actually provides a bit of grip just by itself so part of the plan is to try and help get costs down is that even though these boards are slightly more expensive ooh, zooming slightly more expensive than just normal ply means we do less carpeting so there's less labor involved so hopefully the cost is a bit cheaper than the average as well i don't know we're gonna see how we go um i think it's a super cool product overall so this is going to cut out the, the box ends, the angle part, do all the uh, engraving. It also, oh no, it doesn't do it this one, this is in the next sheet. It does the, um, the cutout for the draw front as well. And that's all one piece. So those, if, if you decide you don't want carpet on the front, because I still plan on get carpeting the front and the top, but if you just want the hex apply on the front, those hexagon panels will all line up so they're going, going through. So everything's out of the one piece is sort of the, the plan behind it anyway. Actually, I can show you what it's going to do. So if I go into the software, get rid of that for a second. So this is what what it does. So it goes through and it's going to engrave out the lettering first. Yeah, but you get the idea of what that's going to do. So it's going to that simulate what, what it does on the machine. So it does all the lettering, then it starts to do all the cutouts. Oh, slightly panicking. <laughs> it's just because it's a lot of money. It's not even just a, if I ruin a sheet, yeah, cool, 200 bucks, then get another one. But then it's time to go get it, and it's another 200 bucks. And like, oh. I really don't want to ruin it. But I've done everything I can. I've, ran, I've cut two test pieces now and they both work. Everything's cutting right, doing what it's meant to do. I'm just worried it's just send it. Whatever. You can see now it's 
done more so it's starting to cut out the actual pieces. Alright, bugger it. Bugger it. It's gonna hurt if it doesn't work. Um I need to go turn the the dust extraction on first. So everything's gonna get noisy, sorry. The dust extraction. Got vacuum bed. See there. Quite, quite, quite good suction value for the sheet. Because it's a sealed sheet, it's actually pulling it down really good. Like on the chipboard, that was barely half that. So if I try and push a sheet, it goes nowhere. It's actually really, it's actually really good. Oh, time to freak out. All right, let's just press play because we have to. It's gonna ask me to press it twice because I'm using v -carb. It always asks me to press it twice for some reason. Alright. Make up my glory. So you can see there, it's um, what I was talking about with the engraving into the ply. It's really good. I like it a little bit better. Don't get money, can't take it. Alright, let's cut. So that's off. Seemed to cut it really good. It actually held down really nicely. Um, only thing I've noticed is, is it hasn't cut all the way through on some sections for some reason. I've, I've tried to do it as minimal as possible so I don't cut into the bed too much. Whatever. Um, I've just left a bit of an onion skin around some of it. That'll come off really quickly with a bit of a um, file. The next one I'm probably just going to increase that depth down by 0.1 of a mil and that should sort that issue out. It's fine. Which I'm super happy with all that. That's like my four parts didn't move around there, they're stuck together. Alright, so we'll get this over here, load the next sheet up, cut that so I can build everything. We'll see if this sucker even works. So it's actually about a week later because I've been doing some other stuff and my camera went flat before when I was talking to you, so sorry about that. Anyway, drawers are finished, finally. So I'm actually going to put you down for a second. Not, not, like, not like a dog put you down, just put the camera down on the table and you guys can watch what's going on here. So, ready, top drawer, all the way out. Second drawer, pulls all the way out. And this is what I stuffed up when I done my first set in my car. I wanted to change it here. I put, so I put these runners up as high as I can. So when this comes up, it just misses it. I'm talking like, oh, I'm so happy about that. I really am. But that's the drawer. So they, that's the sort of the finished product of what I'm talking about. So you get the carcass, the main drawer, the internal drawer and the lift up table. You say it like that and it sounds really basic, but there's a fair bit of work that goes into in, into that. Even on the back of the drawer, I, I can't remember if I talked back about this earlier. Obviously the logo on the back there, the little slot to allow for air ventilation in and out. So when you push these drawers in and out, obviously you can get a bit of like extra air that needs to escape somewhere. If you don't have it, you get that little bit of resistance. You even get a little bit of like, 
<laughs> Even get a little bit of sucking when you follow that up. <laughs> yeah, I should probably edit that out. <laughs> um, but, so that sort of solves that issue overall. I'm so happy with how these, I actually want to put these in my car. I'm, these are mint. Like having the top handle on there, I can't do it on mine because of the way that the runners are set up at the time. Oh, I so want this. All right, I'm gonna go chuck this in the car now over at, uh, at Rodney's place at DNA Melbourne. Hopefully the client likes it. Okay, so install time. So I'm actually using the full bore false floor here. I think Dion does a really great floor. I have made my own floor, but I kind of don't want to go stepping on too many toes for what's out in the industry already. I've messaged Dion to say, to ask if I can have floors at sort of a, a trade price maybe, so I can help supply them to people at a reasonable dollar. Uh, that was about a month or six weeks ago, and he still hasn't replied to me, so <laughs> Tiffany doesn't like what I'm doing. But I'm happy to still try and keep supporting another good Aussie business. I'll buy his floors and then obviously just give them to you guys at cost price, is, is the goal anyway. And here at Melbourne 4x4 DNA, uh, Rodney there, great team he's working with, absolutely love his work. Putting the drawers in here, obviously we've got two people carrying it. I can lift them by myself, but at 70 kgs, it is a little bit of a struggle just by myself, so just got Rodney to give me a bit of a hand to chuck them in the car. All right, so it's like a keyway knot. Yep. Okay. And then there's just a couple of screws put down in there. Just hold it down. Yeah. So this video isn't actually intended to be a sales pitch. Definitely not trying to lose my business, but obviously it is going to create some interest in the product in what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, so if you are interested in, in looking at buying a set or getting something custom made for your setup or this, or this exact setup even, um, shoot me a message on Insta or Facebook and we'll discuss what you're after. Little bit of cleanup and the job is done. All right, so the drawers are actually finally in the car now. So this is actually the, the as we said before, the first set that I've done for a customer, as opposed to just building drawers for myself. And they're super cool. But the advantage to the handles as well, obviously, one-handed operation, to open everything now as opposed to mine where I needed two hands to do that. But you can see, it's just open so easy. Even this one, as long as you're opening up in the gaps, one-handed operation to open that as well. Obviously, you pull it from one side, it's not gonna work. Um, yeah, same for shutting, you can basically pull it from the gaps and shut it by one hand as well, which is awesome. Um, I like it. So far, all the guys here are saying they like it. We're just going to find out whether the customer likes it now. You go from there. Just missing that one little side panel. So this sucker here, for some reason, it's gone, gone missing. But we'll find it. Got the top bit in, all the power's there. Gaps for the fridge are there. Fridge opens, operates. Does what it's meant to do. It's just... It just worked the way I thought it was going to work. Which is exciting. Alright, tell a look. 